We're coming to the end of our series, The Faith Zone, and tonight we're going to take a closer view of Sarah, the wife of Abraham. And what we're going to do with her is we're just going to encompass her life and review and wrap up the story all at the same time. How awesome is that? God's just going to put a beautiful bow right on top. So as we know already, <coughs> excuse me, Sarah was the wife of Abraham, one of the great patriarchs of the Bible. Now, I don't know about you, but we would tend to think that Sarah would be this great woman of God with all of this dignity and honor. But, <laughs> would you like to know about Sarah? <laughs> so, Sarah sometimes behaved badly. She threw fits and tantrums. She knew how to manipulate to get what she wanted. This is in the Bible. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. She could be impatient, temperamental, conniving, cantankerous, cruel, flighty, pouty, jealous, erratic, unreasonable, a whiner, a complainer, and a nag. <laughs> Yikes. Don't think you were <laughs> she was by no means a perfect model of godly grace and meekness. <clears throat> Are you shocked to hear that? What I love about the Bible, it's not a book of perfection, is it? Amen. It's a book that shows us exactly the way people are. Mm -hmm. And what that does for us is we look at those people and say, if God can love them, if God can shine through them, then there's hope for me. That's right. Amen. That's right. So instead of our vision of Sarah being perfect and always behaving like the perfect wife, always obeying God with a halo around her head, instead, she sounds more like us. What do you think, folks? Yes. Oh, thank you. There's one. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> the rest of you are too much in shock. I get it. But what we're going to do as we begin to learn more about her life is the Bible shows all the imperfections and to shine through his perfectness. I love that. So her name originally was Sarai, and it means my princess. And her name was not changed to Sarah until she was 90 years old, according to Genesis 17. What you're going to want to do is either your Bible or your Bible app, turn to the book of Genesis, and we're going to, we're going to be looking at several chapters, but you might want to start with chapter 16 and just, just get ready there. The scripture repeatedly mentions one thing about Sarah. She was stunningly beautiful. The Bible doesn't say that about too many people. She was stunning. And what's interesting is that she's not mentioned in the Bible until she's 65 years old. She was beautiful, she was attractive, and she was Medicare age. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the Bible doesn't mention anything about her until that, retirement age. Even at that age, she was so beautiful. She was such a beauty. And so often, Abraham assumed other powerful men would want her in their harem. And to this day, Sarah is still remembered for her legendary beauty. But Sarah had one desire above anything else, and that was to have a child. And she was barren her entire life. And because she was childless, she was tortured by that. Every recorded episode of, of her tantrums or her meanness, her ill temper in her household was always surrounded around her being childless. And it related to her not being able to function as a mom. So she spent many years in depression about that. 
She uh, wanted to be a mom desperately. So as we learned a couple weeks ago, she concluded in error that God was restraining her from having children and she was mad at God. Now we find out through our story that it wasn't God. God had a miracle for her. But why is it we blame God first? <laughs> We blame God for our problems when he's not our problem. He's our answer. He's our solution. So she was desperate to have a child, so she concocted a scheme that her husband would father a child through her handmaiden. Everybody say, uh-oh. Uh -huh. Yep, not going to turn out good. And we find out later that it tore her family apart, and it left scars on her personality. I think that's an interesting way to put it because some of the scars of our life leave scars on our personality. So Sarah had faults. Could we agree with that? Mm -hmm. They were rather obvious. And at times, her faith in God grew weak. And her heart sometimes, her heart and her emotions led her astray. So at this point of our study, we're tempted to say, Wow, she was rather severe. She was not a very good person. She wasn't always kind. She was self-centered. She was ill-tempered. But there's so much more to Sarah than that, and I want to talk about that too. Sarah had obvious weaknesses, and so do we. But she also had important strengths, and so do we. Sarah was like many women not to keep on a pedestal because she was human and she had common personalities that we could identify with and we probably wouldn't say she was full of neatness but there were some things that she was full of she had a gift of hospitality and tonight we're going to look at how she at a drop out of, of a hat put on this beautiful spread she also was faithful to her husband. She had deep affection for him. And she sincerely loved God, even though she had some troubles with him, mm -hmm. which were on her side, not his. But indeed, we could say she was an extraordinary woman. She gave birth to one son, and she's recognized as a matriarch in the Hebrew history. And she shows, in, in spite of it all, an enduring faithfulness to her husband, even though she's more notorious for her famous blunder involving the, the act of unfaithfulness with her husband, which she orchestrated, right? Mm -hmm. So God chose Abraham and called Abraham um, to be the father of a great nation. And the hope of mankind uh, was to be raised up with someone by the name of Abraham. And out of Abraham would be um, a nation, and prophets would arise out of that nation, all coming from Abraham. That's pretty cool. In the scriptures of uh, faithfulness, we call, we call Abraham the father of faith. And we've learned the last few weeks how amazing uh, his faith was as he grew and the training wheels came off of his faith and he became stronger and more developed in his faithfulness to God. God would dwell in his midst and set his sanctuary among them. And by Abraham and Sarah's lineage would be the deliverer the Messiah would rise. Mm. Wow. So this is why this story in the Bible is so pivotal, because it will change mankind. So in Abraham, all the nations of the world would be blessed, according to Genesis 18, 18. So what was Sarah's role in all of this? Well, obviously, there wasn't going to be a nation arising out of Abraham without a wife, right? <laughs> she was key to that role. 
and Abraham could never be the patriarch of a great nation if she wasn't first the mother of his offspring. So Sarah was aware <clears throat> of the Lord's promises to Abraham, and she longed to see those promises come true. However, she remained childless. In Genesis 12, is we begin to see the story of Abraham unfold and how God called Abraham and his wife out on a journey, a faith journey, to follow him. And one of the things that we re have to realize is that Sarah followed Abraham. And life as a nomad was no picnic. They didn't have a Holiday Inn or Ramada Inn or any of that kind of stuff. They pitched tents. They lived outside. And because they were nomads, that means they traveled all around from place to place. So she joined that, and never once did we hear that she said, No, Abraham, I'm not going. I'm not leaving Mama and Dad. Never once did we hear that. So the promise that God gave Abraham in Genesis 12, God's promise was unconditional and unlimited. So God would bless Abraham, make him a blessing, and through him, he would bless the world. So Sarah understood this promise. She was well aware of 